Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mount Studio, and we are continuing this itinerary app series. And today, I'm going to show you how to swipe a row to delete. Specifically, we're talking about our trips. We so far have added the ability to add trips. Now, we want to give the user the ability to delete a trip. And in this tutorial, we'll implement the new iOS 11 way to swipe to delete by configuring a trailing swipe action. I'll explain what that is and how to do it. We'll also present a pop-up to confirm deletion using the UI alert controller. Okay, so let's get right into our project and code our swipe to delete so users can delete trips. Okay, and before we do that, we're going to just jump into our project management board here so we can keep track of what we're doing and what we have done so far. And in our last video, we added a photo to our trip. So we're going to drag that to the done column. And this week, we're going to delete a trip. There we go. Okay, now that we're in our project, we can begin by coding the swipe action. But first, you might notice over here in our project navigator that there's a bunch of M's. And that's because I forgot to commit after the last video. So normally what you want to do is after you implement one feature, you want to commit that feature. So when you start another feature, you can easily discard all your changes if there's a problem. So I'm just going to commit all this code here that was used to add a photo to our trips. And then I want to check out this push to remote. So this will automatically push it to Bitbucket. There we go. Okay, we are in our trips view controller. And this is the view controller which displays all of our trips. And let's run the app real quick just so you can see where we're at. Okay, we have our default trips popping up. And what we want to be able to do is swipe these rows so it presents us with a delete option that we can click and delete that trip. Okay, so in this view controller, we have the delegates for our table view. And this is where we're going to add our swipe actions. Let me just create some space here. Now, in order to find the new swipe actions, what I do is you just type in table view and then just start typing in swipe. And you should see the two matches at the top. There's a leading swipe action and a trailing swipe action. The trailing swipe action is the one we want. That's the one that will appear at the right side of our screen. And just to let you guys know, trailing doesn't always mean it's going to be on the right side. It just means it's going to be at the end of how your words read. So if you're using a language that reads from left to right, like English, then the trailing will be on the right side. If you're using a language that reads right to left, like Arabic, then the trailing will actually be on the left side. So for us, we always want it to be on the left side because that's the convention where the delete usually shows up. Okay, now as you can see here, what it's looking for is a UI swipe configuration. And that's what we're going to return. But the UI swipe configuration is kind of like a container that holds swipe actions. So the way this works is we create actions, like delete, and then we add them to the UI swipe actions configuration, and we return that. So let's start off by creating our first action, which is for the delete action. And for the style, as you can see, there's only two options. There's destructive and normal. We want destructive because this is a destructive task, such as deleting data. Oh yeah, it says it right there in the tooltip, an action that deletes data or performs some type of destructive task. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. For title, this is text that can show up in the swipe action and it's optional you don't have to provide anything you could just use an icon if you wanted to but we'll just say delete and then a contextual action handler so this is code that you want run when they actually tap on delete and you see we have some parameters here so I'll just say contextual action we'll call this view and it's hard to tell what this next parameter is here this third parameter as you can see, it's just a function type that has a parameter of a boolean and returns a void or returns nothing. So, but this is actually very important. This is what we want. And this is actually a way to indicate to iOS that your action was successful or it wasn't successful. And the parameter is actually called action performed, but you can't really tell from what it shows here. So I'm going to type in action performed as the parameter name. And then you have to define that function parameter like the way we saw it. And it was a, a bool. It took a bool and it returned nothing, right? Return void. Uh, another way of writing that is you can say returns nothing that way. 
That's just another way to show that a function doesn't return anything. Okay, so we have our delete, and this is where we're actually going to perform the delete. And then the last thing we're going to do is return a new UI swipe configuration. And it, as you can see, it returns an array of actions. So right now we only have one action for delete, but if you wanted to, you could have multiple actions when you swipe. There we go. Okay, so let's just run it now and see what it looks like. Okay, when I swipe, it just shows the delete here. So that's what we want. It shows the delete, that's fine. Nothing happens when I tap on it because there's no code. So let's customize this delete a little bit more by adding an X icon to it. And the way we add an icon is we want to add it to the delete action. And it's simply the image property. And we'll use an image literal. I did add an icon called delete, which is right here. And as you can see, it's a little X. So if you go into assets, you can see where I added the delete. And I just want to show you some properties here. What I added was a PDF. And a PDF holds the vector drawing data. And as you can see, I, I checked off this property here, preserves vector data. And I made it to single scale. And if you're familiar with images and using images as icons, normally you have to change this property to template image so it takes on the color of the tint. Well, we don't really need to do that in this case because the image won't be using the tint color. It will actually take your image data here and anything that isn't alpha, it actually just turns it to white. And that's something you can't control. So you can use a black image, a blue image, orange, doesn't matter. It'll just change it to white when you run it. So let's run it and see what that looks like. So we swipe it, and there's the X. And notice it did turn it white. Okay, so everything looks good. So let's actually add some code so it can delete the trip. Now, if you remember from previous videos, I put all the functions into this trip functions class. And you see delete trips here. It doesn't have any code in it. So we'll actually have to add some code before we can use it. And right now, the trip data is being held in this data class. And here we have our trip models here. And we want to remove at a specific integer. Yeah, that's probably the best one that we can use. So we'll actually need the index of where this trip model is. And what I'll just do is I'll just type in index. So we'll change this parameter here. Instead of passing in the whole model, we'll actually need the index of that trip. All right, that should do it. Now we come back here and we can use that trip function. And how do we know what the index is? Well, we can get that from the index path, which is right here. And, and we get the index by looking at the row. So the row in the table view will correspond with the index of the actual trip object. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, we click delete and still nothing happens. So the actual delete happened, but why isn't this updating? Well, it's because we need to reload the data in this table view to refresh it and show what the actual state of our data is. So we can do that here. We have access to our table view because it's being passed into this function right here. So we'll just take the table view and we will reload the data. Okay, we swipe, tap delete, and there we go. So it updates the table and it shows the current state of the data. But you notice when we do this, like it just disappears really fast. And maybe we can make that more gradual or animate it in some way. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to reload the data. Instead, I'm just going to remove the row from the table view. So basically, I'm going to update the state of the table view to match the state of the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the table view object again, and I'm going to delete the row using this function right here. So this function will delete the rows at a certain index path, and we can provide it with a type of animation. And again, how do we know the index path? Well, we just use the parameter that's passed in. And for animation, if you just hit dot, you can see the options that you have here for this enumeration. You know, you have automatic, you can delete it from starting from the bottom, you can fade it out down here. 
So just look for your options right here where it says UI table view row animation. And you can experiment with those different ones. I'm just going to choose automatic for simplicity and let's see how that looks. Okay, swipe, click delete. And it was a really nice animation when it deleted, but <laughs> we still had this contextual action that's still showing, right? So why is that happening? And how can we get rid of that? So the reason why this is persisting is because we need to indicate that our UI contextual action performed successfully. And that's where this parameter right here comes into play, this action performed. So we have to indicate that yes, the action did perform successfully. And we pass in true to indicate that. So now if we run it, we can swipe it, click delete, and it goes away the way we expect it to. So if you want to be able to find information on this, it took me a little while to find this, but what I did is I start with here and I hold on command on the contextual action and I just click it and then you show quick help and this shows some information on the UI contextual action. And then you click on this uh, class reference right here. So it brings up the help file, which is perfect. This is what we want. And we want to look at this handler right here, this UI contextual action handler. So I'm going to click on this in it. And then if you scroll over, you see the handler is right here. And it's actually a UI contextual action handler. So you can click on that. <laughs> and now it goes into the UI contextual action handler. And these are the three parameters, the action, the source view, and the completion handler. And inside the completion handler, it has the action performed. And this is the function that we're using. And that's why I called it action performed. So it matches this name right here. And you can see right here, a Boolean value indicating whether you perform the action. Specify true if you perform the action or false if you're unable to perform the action for some reason. So we're going to need to call false on it if the person doesn't want to delete. But right now they don't really have an option because they just click delete and it deletes automatically. So everything is working great as it is, but you may notice in some apps that when it comes to deletion, the app wants to confirm that this is what the user actually wants to do. So they present an alert asking for confirmation. So we'll do the same for the deletion. So let's see how we can present an alert inside the UI contextual action that we made earlier for the delete action. Okay, so we're going to work with this code block right here where we perform the delete, but instead of performing the delete, we're going to show an alert first. So I'm going to start by creating an alert and then adding a couple of actions, one for cancel and then one for the actual delete. Okay, and this is the title, and we'll say delete trip for the title. And for our message, we want to say something like, you know, are you sure you want to delete this trip? And then show them, you know, their options, cancel or delete. Okay, and the style, you know, there's two styles. You can have it show up as an action sheet, or you can have it show up as an alert. And we want the alert option here. Okay. Let's just create some more space here. There we go. Okay, then we want to add a couple of actions, one for cancel and one for delete. And I'm just going to hit enter, and then we'll use this as the constructor. And we're going to use this one. So this will be our cancel. And for our style, we want to use cancel. And then for the handler, we actually do want a handler in this case, because remember, we want to call action performed, but with false instead. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'll just call this alert action. And in here, I want to say action performed false. Okay, but watch what happens here. So it's giving me an error here, but I can just click on this and click fix. And what it did is it added this word escaping to action performed and this allows me to use it inside of this code block. Okay, now we want to add an action for the delete. Hit enter. And what style do we want for this button? Well, this will be destructive. Okay, then I'm just going to grab this code right here and paste it in here. All right, good. Now we have our alert, we have our two actions, and then we just need to present it. 
animated true and we don't have a completion handler we don't need one so let's delete that and let's run it and see how that works click delete and then we have our message here are you sure you want to delete this trip uh, cancel no I don't and you notice because we said action performed false it automatically swipes it back into place makes it go away so that's nice and then if we click delete it'll go ahead and perform the delete animation and, and remove that row from the table and if you want we can customize this further you know here it says are you sure you want to delete this trip but maybe we want to show the trip name right so if you want we could get the the name of the trip we just have to maybe put in some code like this we go into our data we look at our trip models and we want to be able to get the trip that we're on you know using the index so we can do that again using the index path uh, looking at the row we're on and that should give us our trip and then we can just insert it into this message here we use trip um, oh here we go let's get some autocomplete going here trip dot title so let's see how that looks yeah are you sure you want to delete this trip trip Bali and you say yes delete now I use the word delete here but you can use the word yes and you can change this to no if you want it's up to you on how you want to use it and I just want to point out one more thing too you know because we made this contextual action destructive that's where the red color comes from notice we didn't set this red color anywhere so it shows as red because of this style is destructive. We could override that color if we wanted to. We could say delete dot background color, you know, equals, and then we'll say like color literal and just pick a nice color for it. You know, maybe you want a different type of red color. Let's choose this red color. Then if you run it, as you can see, it's a different type of red color. So you can use that to match the theme of your colors, you know, if it suits your app better. But for now, I think I'll just delete it and use the default red color. All right, guys, you learned a new way on how to swipe to delete using a swipe action configuration. And remember, this is only available starting in iOS 11. We create a UI contextual action to represent our delete action. The contextual actions are pretty simple with really just five properties that you can customize at this time. For more in-depth information on swipe actions, you can watch another video tutorial that I created on swipe actions, and I'll put a link to this video in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you learned something new, click the like button down below and consider sharing it. You can share it on your Twitter feed, Facebook, or your professional blog. Consider subscribing because there's going to be more videos coming out in this series. I think the next video we're going to do is we're going to swipe in the opposite direction and present the user with a modify or an edit option. If you want to help out my channel or this video, you can provide a translation for it by clicking on the three buttons down below and adding your own translation for your native language. This will help people in your country find the video. All right, thanks guys.